Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 14. And this is what it says. Now it came about in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria and all were proceeding to register for the census, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And it came about that while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in their fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Pray with me. Lord, this day is a day to celebrate that you can you came into this world and you're here today. And may your power, may your presence, may your spirit not be lost on us this morning. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Read a story about a fellow named Earl. He had a best friend named Frank. And Frank and Earl loved to play golf. They played golf just about every single day. They loved golf so much that they began to wonder, would there be golf in heaven? So they they made a pact that whoever died first would come back and, and let the other one know was there golf in heaven. Well, as it turned out, Frank died first. And true to his word, that he came back. He appeared to, to Earl and he said, Earl, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is there is golf in heaven. Earl said, that's wonderful. We can play golf together in heaven. What's the bad news? He said, well, the bad news is your tea time is next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, who doesn't like good news? The bad news we aren't so, so crazy about. 2020 has given us a lot of bad news. More bad news than most of us can, can, can handle. But this morning, I want to focus on the good news. Good news that, well, it started 2,000 years ago, and that good news is still being still being proclaimed today. And it's the good news. It's the good news that the, the angels came to announce that for you and me, as a matter of fact, for all people, it's the best news that we've ever heard, that born for us as a Savior, 
Christ the Lord. And that word Savior, it literally means a rescuer. Somebody to rescue us. Someone that we can lean on. And, and that's what I want to talk about this morning. That you can lean on. You can lean on Jesus. That you can lean on him because he holds the future. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. Lean on him because he holds the future. Bishop Emerson Koloff told a story about a, a pastor who was being moved from his church. He dearly loved the church, and the church loved him, but he was needed elsewhere, and so the church had a reception for him. He arrived early to the reception, and there were cards, there were gifts, there were flowers for him, and he noticed one spray of flowers in particular. That this, this spray of flowers it had a note on it, but it didn't have a name, and the note read, Rest in Peace. Well, he got curious about that, and so he called the florist, and he, he said, you know, I have flowers here that have a note on it with no name, and it says, rest in peace. Well, there was silence on the other end of the phone, and that's when the florist finally cleared his throat and said, well, it may warm your heart to know that somewhere in the city there's someone who has a funeral, and their flowers say, good luck where you're going. <laughs> well, we don't need luck where we're going. That luck is, doesn't have anything to do with it. That we have a Savior. We have a Savior, and His name is Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Not you might be saved or good luck being saved or if you, you, you'll be saved if you're really, really good. You shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth, and we know what that is, Jesus is Lord, that, that you will follow him and believe with your heart. Now, that's the part that needs a, a little bit of explanation. Most of the time, we think believing is something that we do with, with our heads. But the, the Greek word here for believe, the, it's pistuo, and the root of it is pistis. It's the same word for faith that literally it means to lean on him. It literally means to lean on, to rely on, to trust Him, to have confidence in a person, in that relationship that you have with someone that, that you know them so, so well that you have confidence in them. You trust them. And that's the relationship that we're, we're invited to have with Jesus Christ that we can lean on him. He's our savior. We can rely on him. We can trust him. We can have confidence in him. We can have confidence in the future. 1 John 5.13 says, These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God in order that you may know that you have eternal life. Not that you might guess that you have eternal life or hope that you have eternal life, that you might know that, that he came he came for you and for me. And in Scripture, it's written that we might have assurance for all eternity. An eternity that starts now and, and goes on forever in the future. We can lean on Him. We can lean on Him because He holds the future. We can lean on Him also because He holds the present. Maureen Jones lived with her husband for many years. After her husband died, she lived alone for many years. And then came that painful decision to make, to move into assisted living. She chose the assisted living place that she was going to because she knew a lot of the people there. When she made an appointment with the director to meet her in the lobby, that he would show her around the place and show her to her new room. When he met her in the lobby, he said, Good morning, Mrs. Jones. I'd like to show you around the place, and I'll show you your new room. And that's when she squealed with the enthusiasm of a six-year-old. She said, I love the room. And he said, Well, what do you mean that you love it? You haven't seen it yet. And that's when she said this. She said, It doesn't matter. Whether I like the room or not doesn't depend on how the furniture is arranged. It depends on how I've arranged my mind, and I've already decided to love it. 
I can be grateful or grumpy. Because I'm a Christian, I choose to see each day as a gift from God. Because I'm a Christian, I choose to be happy and grateful. Did you and I have a Savior? And this Savior, it, he, he changes us. He transforms us into a, a new creature, a creature with new eyes. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. And the new things that have come are this kingdom that he ushered in. And, and he's given us as, a, as, as new creatures to see this kingdom and to choose, to choose, with the power of the risen Christ, to choose to be grateful, not grumpy. To choose, to choose, to be happy and grateful. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That the risen Christ transforms our mind. That even in 2020, with all the bad news around us, we can still celebrate the good news. That you and I have a Savior, one we can lean on. A Savior that we can rely on. A Savior that we can trust and have confidence in. We have something far better than a guardian angel. You and I have a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. And you can lean on Him. You can lean on Him in the present. You can lean on Him in the future. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning, you can lean on Him because He holds the past. Back in 2009, my son was in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You may have seen him. I'm sure you remember him there on Times Square. He was the one with the drums, the quads around him. Well, the Harrison High School Band was also around him as well. But my son was in the Macy's Day Parade. I enjoyed being able to go there and celebrate with him in New York, marching there on Times Square with the band. I also enjoyed it as a time to, to look around and, and be a little bit of a tourist there in New York. One of the things that I noticed... There in front of the Rockefeller Center is that huge statue of Atlas with the world on his shoulders. His head's down, his back's bent, and his knees are bowed under the weight of the world. And then I contrast that to across the street in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Behind the high altar, there's a smaller statue. It's a statue of a boy. And this boy, in one hand, holds the world, and the boy is Jesus. And the contrast is clear. We can try and bear the weight of the world ourselves, and the best that can happen, the very best that can happen, is we'll be crushed by it. Head down, back bent, and knees bowed. But when we rely on, when we lean on, when we trust in our Savior, Jesus Christ, to hold the world in His hand, He has strength that, that you and I don't have. Strength. Strength to forgive. Strength to wipe away all of the painful past. That when sin and shame and sorrow were most acute, Jesus took it on himself, and on the cross, he nailed it to the cross to take away its power for you and for me, to save us. And when he rose from the grave on the third day, he gave that power to you and to me. Power to transform, power to, to change. Power that turns us into to new creatures, a new creation. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ died for sin once for all, the just for the unjust in order that he might bring us to God. Having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. And that's how he brings us to God. By being made alive in the Spirit, he lives his life through you and through me. 1 Peter 5.17 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 
He cares for you. You matter to God. You can lean on Jesus. You can rely on Him. You can trust in Him. Because He's wiped away all the shame, all the sin, all the sorrow of the past. And He rose again on the third day to give that power to you and me. He's our Savior. He's our Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, it may be that a long time ago, that you confessed Jesus as your Lord and you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead. But you've been carrying around the weight of the world in 2020. You've let the anxiety, the weight of the world crush you. And this morning, this morning, you want to renew that confession? Renew that, that trust to rely on Him, to lean on Him, to give the weight of the world over to Him. Or it may be that you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord, that you've never believed in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. You've never leaned on Him or trusted Him in a relationship, and you want to start that relationship for the first time this day. Well, I want to pray with you that you do just exactly that right now. Pray with me. Lord, our greatest need in this world, it's you. And long ago, the angels proclaimed the good news, and that's the good news that still, still is being proclaimed this day. That you care for us. That you don't leave us alone, that you're the Savior. You're the Savior that, that leads us. That you're the Savior that we lean on in times like this. Lord, we've spent too much time being crushed under the weight of the world, especially here in 2020. We've been carrying anxiety that we were never intended to have. We've been carrying the weight of the world. We've been carrying sin and shame and sorrow that you took on yourself and nailed to the cross a long time ago to take away its power. You rose from the grave to give your power to us. This morning, may we confess that you are the Lord. You are the Savior. And we put our trust in you. We lean on you. We rely on you. Fill us with your spirit that gives us strength we don't have. Strength that we need this day. Strength in your good news. Strength in your Holy Spirit that we might be a, a new creature with new eyes and be transformed into the sons and daughters, the men and women, the children that you intend us to be. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a 
place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.